Okay, today we are going to look at a few things that has to do with special effects. Now the one thing you don't want to do is load a page up with glows and lasers and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. It detracts from the page. It's always about telling a story. So if you just throw all this crap on a page, uh, it detracts, unless it makes sense. So what we'll look at today is we'll look at how to do um, uh, three or four different things. Uh, we'll look at how to do glows. Uh, we will look at how to do what are called color holds. We will look at uh, how to use um, and maybe create a custom brush. And we will look at how to uh, add uh, textures to a page using like a, a, a photograph. And I think we might look at one other thing, which would be, um, and I'm blanking on it now, I just thought of it. We will look at how to um, uh, add a selective color uh, areas to a page. So um, let's hop in and look at uh, how to do glows, because they're pretty simple. So we'll look at those first. So we've looked at this before. Uh, and so we got this big purple guy. And I was told by the artist or the, the writer that his eyes are, are red and they glow. So we're going to make them glow. Now, what do you need? So here we've got your regular layers. Here's some other layers we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, also, don't do what I do. Name these layers. I don't even know what they are now. So name your layers. So the first thing you have to do when you want to do a glow is you uh, make a new layer and you can name it FX you make everything, uh, make your foreground black you fill that layer black and then you come over here to your layer um, uh, mode and you choose screen and then it's like it's not even there. Now the key is you have to be in RGB. If you're doing this in CMYK, it isn't going to work. It looks kind of milky. So the next thing you want to do is we've got the effects here. And I was taught a couple different ways. I've kind of landed on this way, and it's a pretty straightforward way to do it. Uh, I'm going to pick up a red color. Uh, I try to use a pretty saturated color, even if it goes illegal. Uh, sort of fix that and then try to get as saturated and, and bright as you can with it. You can even do that. Give it a try. I'm going to pick a brush. Uh, usually I will pick like a, just a soft brush. I'll reduce the size of the brush. I usually have my flow. This is a little high. Kick it back down to 60. And I'm going to come in this area and I'm just going over it with my pen drawing and you can see just how incredibly easy this is but we don't want to go overboard we don't want to sort of make this so it goes like this I mean I guess you could uh, I think it's overkill because it covers the line art up I'm gonna get rid of some of that so you know it's just a light it could just be even just be like that just like a really faint glow and then let's say you wanted to add like but like a white pin point go to white some of those are a little overdoing it but they're there and really that uh, all there is to know about doing a glow and if you notice you want the glow layer over here to be over the line art layer. So now if we look at this, the glow is over the line art. If you put it under that, it loses all its effect because it's just coloring the actual um, background. By putting it up here, though, it stands above the line art and really shows the glow. So you know, lightsabers, zaps, powers, you know, and you know, if you pick a green, Let's go back up here. If you were to pick a green and do this, his eyes would glow green. 
Um, come over here. You know, blue, his eyes are going to glow. Well, that's a, a whitish blue. And there's some really neat things you can do, too. You can pick up this red and make this glow, right? I'm going to sort of exaggerate it so you can sort of see something here. You can come over here and grab the smudge tool. And maybe do it to 80 so I can really show you. too thick. And as you can see it's sort of smudging that out so it almost looks like it's flaring and you can even do a little bit of a then smudgy in here and sort of make it look like it's and as you can hear I'm making these that is very important. You really should do that. Get in the habit of making ridiculous silly sound effects because it makes the hours that you do this pass so that might be overkill, but that's how you could do that, just by using that little uh, smudge. It kind of looks neat. So that is glows. Boom. Okay. Now, next, let's take a look at color holds. So I'm going to uh, go to this next image here. Much different. And we've got this flame here, but it looks kind of you know weird. It's got the, not weird, but you you got black. It's fire, you know. So you've got the black line art. So what we're going to do is we're going to color this line art another color. We're holding the color color hold. I think that's where it comes from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab my polyagonal lasso. Make sure any aliasing its feather is off, and I'm going to just select and I'm making sure that I'm getting all that in there. Oops, I missed my selection. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to make sure I'm not getting the actual panel. I'm not getting the dragon. So there it is. I then turn off the color layer. So here's the color layer. Turn that off. So I just have line art. We go to select color range. And you just want to choose under sampled colors shadows. Because this is black. So it's going to read it as a shadow. And since it's the only thing there, because everything else is transparent, nothing's behind there. You're going to see the um, you're going to see select line art. Now remember to do this. You've got to. You just can't have your channel on your your line art channel here. You actually have to load your line art in the channels. Okay. And you do that by going to select load selection. You know, choose your line art, and then it'll be there. So now we've used select color range shadows. Okay, it has selected that. Okay. Now we can turn this back on. And then what we do is create a new layer. And then you want to name that holds. Or color holds. You click on this add a layer mask button right here. And if you notice, everything's black except you can see this little tiny white dot. That tiny little white dot is this. So I'm pretty sure, let's see, how do I select it so you can just see that? There's a way to do this. There we go. So that is what's in there. So everything that's black will keep the color away, and what's white, the color will show through. So if I select this layer now, you can see how the box right here is highlighted here. If I do this, it's highlight, it'll fill that. If I do this, it fills that. So let's say we want it to be like a dark sort of orange. I select this. I fill that, and now this line art is this nice orange color. You know, it, whatever you filled it with, obviously it would fill it with. Maybe it's blue, but obviously it doesn't make sense. A nice orange color uh, works really well there. You could see then, oh, what would it look like if I went with like a bright orange? Looks a little weird. 
Um, I still like to keep my line a little dark when I'm doing these color holds. So it just gives it a nice little touch. It's like there it is, it's like this black. And there it is, this color. It just gives it a nice touch. So that is how you do a color hold. I'm actually going to save that and use that in the book. So we looked at how to do glows. We looked at how to do color holds. Okay. Now some color holds can be a lot tricky when you're selecting a huge selection. Um, but some are just that simple. So color holds. Um, let's now look at uh, maybe creating a custom brush. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to start with just some brush. Um, well, you know what we actually could do? Let's just create a brush right from whole cloth. We come over here to new. And I'm going to make this um, uh, 20 pixels by 20 pixels. I made that way too small. So let's do it again. Let's make it uh, 300 pixels by 300 pixels. OK. I'm going to switch to a pencil. And I'm going to draw some stuff just with a black. Um, I, I don't know. This could look really strange when it's a brush. I have no idea. I'm just sort of fooling around. That is crazy. I'm going to fill that and start that again. Now again, I'm not sure what that's going to do. But now you could bring in a photograph here. You could do anything you want. I'm then going to go to Edit, Define a Pattern. So there's the new pattern. I should have probably named it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to close that because I don't need it anymore. No, don't save. And now I'm going to just pick a, a brush. Okay. And I think I'll pick, you know, just the soft round brush. And come over here. I've got two different versions of Photoshop. I use one at home and I use one on my laptop. So I'm getting a little, mi <laughs> a little mixed up. Um, with which one to use here. Now I'm going to duplicate this by clicking this little link down here. And now I have duplicated that brush. So I'm not using my existing brush. And now this is the brush pal the brush um, panel. Okay, so I can do a whole bunch of things to this brush now. So I can, uh, again, the first thing you want to do is when you select a brush is to duplicate it by clicking this down here. Or you'll go over the brush you already have. Now, these things let me do all sorts of stuff, and here's what it looks like now. And I can change like the shape dynamics of it. If I click on here, the jitter size, um, like as I'm moving with the brush, like minimum button maximum diameter you can see we're gonna get some weird like some weird stuff starts happening to this brush uh, scattering look at this I actually just pointed to the screen it scatters where when you put your pen tip down where the brush goes so it's not just a straight line anymore it, it can scatter it and you can scatter it more or less so you could do like a natural kind of foliage type brush You can add a texture, and this is where that you don't you didn't have to do the defined pattern, but here's that pattern I just defined, or you can just do no pattern at all. So I'm going to say no no texture. You can make it a dual brush. You can also select another brush that works with it. Color dynamics are handy. Oops, foreground background jitter. 
like let's say you wanted to uh, hue saturation let's say you wanted to use two different shades of green it would it would use both it use it would jitter and use some uh, foreground color some background color so you can get like a modeling effect so fool around with all these and see what they do so this looks kind of neat so I'm just going to use that so now if I come over here that new brush is on the bottom and it's called soft round and we can rename this but I'm going to select it and then when I come over here I'm going to choose a green color and I'm going to choose an, a darker green color my headset's falling out I'm going to select this tree and I'm going to paint oh I picked the wrong brush that's why and you can see what's happening here, what it's doing. Just that simple round brush turned into this. Turned into this thing that scatters. The dots all over the place. And as you can see, this looks like a pretty good foliage brush. Because those look like little leaves, little sprinkling leaves from far away. And that's just by using your brush palette over here and, and, and fooling around with a brush. So there's how to make a custom brush. All right, let's see. Let's look at this one other thing. I'm going to close this and close this. Here's something I like to do a lot that I learned from the amazing colorist Chris Sotomayor is using textures. So let's get rid of the glow and let's get rid of this layer. This was just a brush, this half tony look was a brush I found. But this layer right here, layer 6, is really, I should label it, texture. And what it is, it's at 37%. If I bump it up to 100% and I switch it to normal, this is what it looks like. It's a texture I found. But instead of leaving it in normal, I, I fooled around with the different levels or the different modes. And, I, you know, color dodge didn't work. It was too much. Light color didn't. Well, that light color might have worked. Let's see. And obviously, I don't want it taking up so much, so I'm going to cut down the opacity to maybe like that much. And then I used another brush, a uh, half tone brush I found online, and I painted these green greens in. But that's what it looks like with that texture on it, and it just gives it a little bit more depth, especially when you're something like this. There's no backdrop to really to fool around with. You've got to create your own out of whole cloth. Um, you can fool around with the texture. But you can also put that texture on a creature. So let's say, here's my creature. Okay. I'm going to uh, go to my flats and I'm going to select him. So there he is selected. We come back, so now just the creature selected. I didn't select his eyes because I just won't put a, any texture there. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up uh, a texture. Let's say vintage paper. I found a bunch of vintage paper. Uh, I'm just going to select one. I haven't really, I don't really see what it looks like. So there's vintage paper. I'm going to select all. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to close it. Okay, so I've got the selection made. I've already copied the the um, paper. I come up to edit, paste special, paste into. So it's going to paste it into this, and it makes a layer mask here. I then select this. I hit set T to transform that. This headset is driving me crazy. I extend it to here, and it's not a crate. It's not like an amazingly like complex texture, but you can see it's got like little papery kind of looks. Little, it, it could give it a nice little look. And then I'm going to use maybe um, overlay, and again I'm going to drop it down. 
because it's affecting my the color. Maybe even go with um, saturation. And then I could bring it up a little bit. It's really subtle, but that, that paper quality is in there now. Uh, and it's just a way to sort of give you a piece, you know, multiple. That might that might be way too much if I cut it back though. That's a little so that's a little subtle, but you can definitely the, the wings now do have that papery this stuff in here is the texture of the paper. So that's how you use uh, an overlay. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to add like color to uh, like a um, color to a specific area. Uh, so for that, I'm going to open up. This is turning into a long video. I'm going to go to comics, uh, meteor man, colors. Let's see. I'm going to pick the right one. Pick this one right here. Okay. So this these guys are outside. And then this meteor hits and it warms things up. So what I've done with this is for my outside scenes, if you look over here in the layers, I've got a couple layers here. I've got my line art, I've got my background colors, and I've got a tint layer. And if I select that, if look, you look at this panel, it cools those colors down. Without the tint, tint. Same thing up here, down here. Now the meteor hits the warmth. I hit this, it warms the colors up. And all that is, is this layer right here, this tint layer. But it's not set really high. It's set at color, because it affects the, the, the saturation and the color of the of the, the the base color. It doesn't darken it or lighten it, it just affects its color, tints it with that color. I set it at 20%. That's what it looks like at 100%. And you'll fool around with what percentage you want to use. In some pages, I think I have it 30. Some pages, I have it 10. Some pages, I have it 20. And that tints that. Now you could do just you could have just I could have just selected her, and put this tint layer there, so that you can tint a thing wherever you want. You can also put it over the line art, and it's going to give all the line art just a tiny tint. You can see this black in here. And it's got a little bit of a tint to it. A lot of times, though, I don't like fooling around the line art, so I just keep it on the color itself. So that's how you tint. You can tint a whole page. You can tint just a panel. You can tint anything you want. So that was a lot of different special effects. Use them sparingly. Use them when they help you make the page make sense, help divert the person's eye. Uh, here's a color hold up here because this is important. So I needed it to be the brightest thing it could be, so I just painted right on the line art. Or under the line art. Uh, this needs to be uh, warm to show the explosion. I warmed it up. Big dramatic change. Before, boom, this happens. It starts to get warm. Very warm. So, again, use your special effects accordingly and where they are needed. Thanks.